when it comes to monotheism, polytheism, henotheism, and monolatry, all of these four religious systems are mentioned in the Old Testament. And as we know, uh, it's very uh, difficult to say something like, well, the ancient Jews were just monotheists. Yes and no. In one way they were, in one way they were not, because they're, you know, mixing maybe their worldviews with other people. Uh, they were aware of their most high God or uh, Yahweh Elohim, but they did not deny the existence of other gods because very often in their history, they were so-called flirting with these other deities. They were committing idolatry. And God, only, God wouldn't be so much upset if they were like following stone and wood. So there were some principalities and powers behind these things. So, you know, maybe we can start explaining first what is a monotheism, polytheism, henotheism, and monolatry and uh, differences between these uh, views. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we're very used to calling ourselves monotheists. <clears throat> and it's not wrong, necessarily. It's just very simplistic. Uh, I mean, we have the, the Shema in Deuteronomy 6 that says, uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And we absolutely affirm that. Uh, it, that doesn't mean that he is not a triune being. It doesn't mean that other gods don't exist. It means that there is one who is the supreme creator there is one, only one who is worthy of being worshipped, only one who has all of the qualities of Yahweh, you know, all, all of these things that we're talking about here. So as far as that goes, we are monotheists, but it's, it's a very limited way of looking at what the Bible says about the structure of the unseen realm, the structure of the spiritual realm, and the reality of other gods who are genuinely being worshipped in the world and who have always... Uh, been active in some way, who were defeated at the cross of Jesus, but just like we have attained victory, there's we're still waiting on the, the ultimate consummation of the judgment of those gods. Uh, and so we have the, the idea of monotheism, which we're, we're generally pretty familiar with, but it's it's actually a much more modern term than we tend to realize. And we usually contrast that with polytheism. And polytheism is in generally, it's talking about like um, the kind of structure where you have a pantheon of gods and they might be vying for, you know, power or whatever, but you have a, a ultimate God and his council. And that's almost what we see in the Bible. Like we don't, we don't want to call ourselves polytheists because that indicates that there's legitimacy with all of these gods, and and they are not. God put them in uh, in power. However, he has revoked their power. They no longer have authority, and you can see that in the Old Testament already in Psalm 82. So you have the idea of polytheism versus monotheism, and that's usually most people's kind of structure of reality. We have to be either one or the other, and like most things, it's it's not that simple. <laughs> like there's no two choices that we can choose and say, I mean, uh, so uh, then we have these other two ideas that most people are not so familiar with. Uh, you have monolatry and henotheism. Uh, I'll talk about henotheism a little bit first because that's kind of more general. And this is the kind of structure that you see in the ancient Near East. Uh, henotheism is uh, you, you have multiple gods, they might be in pantheons, they might not, uh, and there are, and you can kind of choose which one you want to believe in. Uh, so in the Old Testament and the ancient Near Eastern world, uh, gods generally weren't that jealous of each other, like they wanted worship from people, but they didn't really care if other, if people worshipped multiple gods. So you could worship this God and you could worship that God. Like there were the local gods who were in power in an area and they kind of defeated each other when one area would defeat another area and a new God would come into power along with that people. So there's, you know, all of this infighting and all of these things. But in general, you could pray to this God for uh, for health, and you could pray to another god for uh, childbirth or, you know, your fertility or, you know, so so there were different gods and they had their own realms. You could just uh, pick and choose which one you wanted to some extent. Uh, it's the, the, the 
the type of jealousy you see is more of a political type where, um, you know, the, the gods wanted the land in general, and that's how they claimed their power. Uh, so that's that's kind of what henotheism is. And some scholars say, oh, well, the Bible was henotheistic because it evolved from polytheism to mono. That's not really the reality that we're seeing that that we see in the Bible, because we believe the Bible is inspired by God. It is it is God breathed. God is the ultimate author, which means that uh, it, it's not wrong here and then more right over here. It didn't evolve into some idea. Uh, then we have the idea of monolatry, which is very similar to henotheism. Um, but just like we have the word monotheism, we have monolatry. So monolatry is that we acknowledge the existence of gods, but you're supposed to worship this particular one right here because he's the one who's the right one. Uh, and a lot of people, scholars, think that this is what we see in the scriptures because, well, we have multiple gods who are acknowledged, but the, the Israelites are supposed to worship Yahweh. This is the only one they're allowed to worship. So that's why some scholars think that the Bible is teaching monolatry. The problem with each one of these systems and uh, frameworks is that none of them explain how you have a system where there is one creator who created all the other gods, who has the ultimate authority, and who divided it out to the other gods and has taken it away. So uh, what we see in the Bible is much more nuanced than any of these specific terms. These can be useful. Uh, if I find it really odd that there's no actual academic term to describe what the Bible says. Uh, maybe we'll come up with one, but uh, for now we're kind of stuck with what we've got, and we've kind of got to understand it in these different ways, but nuanced, if that makes sense. I mean, I think the closest thing we got now is, I don't know, divine counselism. <laughs> <laughs> if we're coining a term, that's there. Um, yeah, it's uh, the Romans were especially. Think about, uh, uh, sorry, uh, henotheism. Uh, the Romans, especially, like they literally purposely incorporated <laughs> other gods and traditions and kind of said, you know, you got to worship Caesar and Jupiter, but then your God, yeah, he's fine too. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in some, some, uh, cases kind of collapsing them in and saying, Oh, you're already doing that. That's this guy that we got, you know, in our pantheon or in our worship already. Um, uh, and for people that have seen it, you know, that, that, that henotheistic idea and that's all that's there, you know, I would push back on that. Cause I think it, it's been in there. I feel like we got to get to some scripture here at some point. I want to read real quick. Uh, first Kings 11, five down to about 10. Cause we have both these ideas in here. So this is, this is Solomon and Solomon, uh, Solomon went after the Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians and after Milcom, the detestable idol of the Ammonites, Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord fully as David, his father had done. And Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the detestable idol of the Moab on the mountain, which is east of Jerusalem and for Moloch, the detestable idol of the sons of Ammon. Thus he uh, also did for all his foreign wives who uh, burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Now the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing. And we got to realize too, like he's, they, they're calling these things idols, but then they also call them gods. So there's both parts kind of going on. And we can see that at least the writer understands that this is not a good idea, even though it happened, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that seems to mimic or or maybe where Paul gets it in 1 Corinthians 10, where he's talking about that um, we know that the idols are anything, but behind those idols are gods and and that you don't want to or demons and you don't want to unify the body that's supposed to be unified with christ with demons and so i think that that, that may be the same idea is that there's idolatry or idols and then there's this move towards what's behind them 
and even that there's different kinds thinking about mm -hmm. if, you know i think ephesians you know there's powers and principalities and dominions yeah. you know it's not just demons and the devil that there's right. kind of a mix of things going on yeah. um yeah. I, I like to say though that you know you, you gotta kind of try to cut through the smoke and mirrors because I think it's not clear on purpose. Right, Paul. When you mentioned uh, about um, back in the days, at least in Roman Empire, all the gods were welcome. Like, oh, you have God, okay, come in. You have God, welcome. You know, you're all gods. You all have gods. So I was just being reminded of uh, a meme that was very popular back in the days when opera is saying to everyone, you have money, you get money, everyone gets money. So I was thinking in opera's voice, you're God or you have God, you all have gods. Like just coming I out. Mean, it was just so funny how uh, truthful it is because back in the days when Christianity was just starting, Christians were considered atheists. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to accept other gods. That doesn't mean that they didn't acknowledge that there is a demonic power behind these uh, so-called gods. But they they want to go and and um, accept them as reality that they should be worshipped like like in today's maybe uh, ultra liberal uh, I don't want to say politics so much I don't watch politics but let's say a society where everything for example hypothetically speaking would be allowed so back in the day if, in Greco Roman culture if every god was allowed there was no you know your god is better than mine or you know, they're all this or they're all they're all welcome. Hmm. I'm just making parallels in my in my head with uh, with opera, you know, in her show with all these gods being welcome in everyone's society. Because after all, who are you to judge and say, you know, my God is the real God. My God is the the boss of all the gods, you know. Right. But that's that that's a good uh, that's a good um, example that you put about uh, Roman Empire. 